Hello everybody, welcome to Lisa's Family Table. Today we're gonna to take a small amount of time to go over the number one question that I get, which is how do I select the right cut of beef? And I've laid out some selections and we're gonna talk a little bit about them. And also in the video below, I've attached a link to Beef What's for Dinner, which actually gives you a deep dive into all the various cuts. Um, but I'm gonna kinda of talk a little bit about my favorites, some of the cuts you may not know about, and some things that you may not even associate with steak, but they're great cuts of beef. Um, in one of my previous videos, we talked about the fact that there's select, there's choice, there's prime, and then there's wagyu. But I also wanna talk about a new cut that's becoming very popular, and it's called wangus. And what it is, is there are cattle farmers that are breeding Angus beef with Wagyu beef, and they're creating a new cut that's just as good as Wagyu. And today I'm talking about Doug Hassel's Hassel Meat Company, which by the way, you can also order online, very similar to Butcher Shop. Um, he is actually you know, raising these cattle very humanely. They're raised in Texas where they get to enjoy the nice grass and so uh, you can feel good about the beef that you're buying from him as well. So I just want to kind of talk about the different cuts a little bit and we're going to zoom in here. I've got in front of me, I'm going to talk a little bit about the ribeye. So these two cuts here are from the same cut of ribeye and these are called prime cuts. And they're a little bit different from each other, but I'm gonna point out a couple things about these. This one here has a very large, what's called the rib cap or the spinellus, and so does this. So these are great steaks, because this rib cap is the best part of what I consider the best steak. And actually, there are some purveyors that sell nothing but the rib cap. In Memphis, Claybrook Farms has them, where they cut the rib cap off and you can roll it up, and it looks like a filet. We'll do a show on that later. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for a large spinellus. I'll probably cut off the tail when I cook these, which is this piece here. You don't have to. I save those pieces and I put them in my stock bag and I make stock with them. I love to make stock and I keep my freezer full of it. Um, this is also a ribeye. This is a choice cut. This is a Wagyu cut. This one's from um, Butcher Shop. Although it has a smaller spinellus, it still has this piece here that, although not quite as tender as the spinellus, is still very tender, but the difference between this steak and this steak, you can see all the different striations of fat in it, and when that hits the heat, those are going to melt, and it's gonna make the meat incredibly tender. So as you go up the chain from select, which is gonna be a lot more um, lean, up to prime cuts, to wangus and wagyu, you're gonna get more fat count. Now. This cut here is also a ribeye, and you can see it looks a lot different than these. We put this in our dry aging refrigerator, and we're gonna do a dry aging video that we're gonna show you. So this is actually a choice cut. It's the same cut as this. You can see how different it looks. You can see where you've got the spinellus, and on this side, the spinellus is smaller. Um, it's hard to see, but when we go to cut this, we're gonna cut some of this dry aging components off of here and again those will go into my stock bag because it makes a very rich beefy stock um, but when you dry age it what's happening is it's pulling moisture out of the steak which seems counterintuitive but what it does is it allows the beef to shine the, the flavor to shine and um, it helps the meat to become more tender so we're going to talk about the dry aging in another video now some of the other cuts that you may not be familiar with, um, I want to, and some of these are frozen, you can't really get the, the full view of it, but this one we've cooked with before. This is a Wagyu New York strip, and this one is from the Hasso Meat Company as well, and we've cooked with this before in one of our videos. We used this for our Steak Diane video, but again, you can see, this is Wagyu, you can see the amount of fat content in this. It's significantly different than this, so even though a New York strip isn't always as tender as a ribeye, if you buy a Wagyu versus a choice ribeye, it's going to be significantly more tender and the amount of flavor is gonna be substantially different, in my opinion. Now, some of these steaks here are little known. This one here is one of my uh, favorites. This is called a Denver steak. 
and it is very tender. I think it's kind of like a merger between a, a ribeye and a filet. It's super tender. If you saw my culotte or my picanha steak recipe and video, this is gonna give you a similar flavor profile and equally as tender. So you could cook it similar to that, or we can show you some other ways in future videos to cook this. But it's actually an incredible steak and I encourage you to try it. This steak here is a flat iron steak. This steak is not as tender as the other steaks we've talked about. Because of where it comes from in the cow, it's super, super beefy, I guess is the way I would describe it. But this is good for marinating. I would marinate this steak or sous vide this steak or do both. We're all familiar with the filet. And again, this is the Wangus filet and it's an incredible piece of meat. And you can look at some of our videos that we've produced on how to cook this. And you could just do a simple uh, seasoning with LSR on this and sear it in your cast iron skillet with some butter and some fresh herbs and this steak would be perfect, needs nothing else. This steak is a beef chuck eye steak and I would treat that similar to the flat iron because it's coming from the chuck, think chuck roast, pot roast. It's going to be tough. Um, if you marinate it and you um, sous vide it or do something to help break down that additional connective tissue, this would be a great steak for reverse sear in your oven, putting it in, in the oven at a low temperature after you've marinated it, patted it dry, put some LSR on it and bring that up to temperature very slowly before searing it, it'll be a great steak. Here, um, something that's popular in the South, this is called a cube steak, and it's basically a tenderized piece of chuck. And people make what's called chicken fried steak. So it's not chicken. When I first moved here, um, I didn't really fully understand what chicken fried steak was, but what it is, is you're frying it like you would a piece of chicken. It's actually quite delicious. So this is so easy to make, and because it's already been tenderized as a chuck piece, you just season it with the LSR, put some flour on it, and you pan fry it, and it's fabulous. This large piece of beef, this is a chuck roast. And I'm gonna do a video on this one because I love to cook once, make two meals out of it. And this is a pretty big roast. And, you know, we're not eating in large groups right now, so this is a great roast. You can sear it off using LSR, cook it in the oven, and then what I do is I take the leftovers and I make a soup the next day. I like to make a beef and barley soup or a beef um, and vegetable soup, but it's fantastic. So, you know, when you're cooking once, especially when you're working from home, you can make a nice Sunday dinner with this. And on Monday, your dinner is already done for when you finish your work day. And we talk about um, making soup. This is just stew meat. This is the chuck roast already broken down. So if you don't want to go through the extra steps, you can make a stew. So you can get it already cut up and the work is already done for you. And we know about ground beef, but I also want to point out that they will cut ground beef at a larger grade so you can make chili. And I really like to use a chili uh, grind when I'm making um, my chili because I like the, the bigger texture of it. I don't want um, the beef to sort of disintegrate into the chili. I like a heartier chili, so this is great for a chili. And then what a lot of people don't think about when they think about bacon is they don't think about beef bacon. And let me tell you something, it's delicious. It's super good. You can see it's very meaty. So you're not getting a lot of fat here. And when you sear this off, I mean, it makes an incredible BLT. Um, it goes great with um, sauteed potatoes. You can do all kinds of great stuff with this. And if you haven't ever tried beef bacon, I really encourage you to do so. So that's really my quick overview of some different cuts of steaks, things you may not have heard of. We've all heard of the filet and a ribeye and a New York strip, but some of these other cuts and the different grades and the way to think about them you may not have heard of. So I hope this was helpful. And I'd love it if you'd comment below on things you'd like to hear about in the future or other questions you might have. So from our table to yours, thank you for coming today.